Hey there, lovely soul, and thank you so much for joining me. I'm Infinity, and we are going to get into the Tarot and Oracle for May 2021. This is for Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Rising, and of course, Cross Watchers as well. Welcome to this reading. Uh, we are going to be doing something kind of interesting today. We're going to be working primarily with the Kim Kranz Wild Unknown uh archetype cards and we're going to be doing her signature reading uh which is the selves the uh places the tools and the uh initiations um so we're picking a card from each one of these and these will set up a really good story for you going into this new month um so I'm doing things very differently with this reading than I have in the past. Uh, I'm going to pull some tarot cards first uh, to get us started. Oh, and just to let you know, each one of these readings that I'm doing for the Zodiac are going to be very different. Aside from this, uh, this main setup here with the four different um, categories of archetypes, as far as what tarot cards, what oracle cards I'm going to use, it's going to be different. So um, just to keep it fresh and new and going with the flow of what each separate and individual uh, zodiac sign needs to get or and what cards I'm going to use to get that information. Oh, wow. First card out, the Empress. <coughs> And if you're unfamiliar with me, infinity, shaman, mystic, medical medium, psychic, physical empath, channeler, astral meditation guide, ascension coach, distance energy healer for um, people and animals, I have a website, thehealingbutterfly.org, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> I got stuck, dot org. And uh, I encourage you to check it out. I have all sorts of goodies on there as far as working with me individually um, for ascension coaching, healing, tarot and oracle, private guided astral meditation. Oh, and I have a special out this month. Um, one more I'm hearing, a special this month for mediumship and I'll put the information down below. So I have 30 and 60 minute uh, <laughs> readings available uh, and they are in major, major discount only through the 15th of May. So don't delay, get your spot today. Okay, let's get into it. The first card we have out is the Empress. Oh, and one last thing before I forget. I just posted a video for empaths. It's called M or are you an empath? And it has information. I'd get into some information. Then we get into a quiz and that's a companion to an ebook I have. So check out that video. Okay. So the Empress, King of Cups, Nine of Wands, Eight of Wands, the high priestess and the three of pentacles it was in reverse but we're putting it right side up i'm hearing here okay wow big cards here taurus we're really connected um, you're getting more connected with your environment with nature with spirit um, synchronicities, feeling like you're, you know, more and more of that infinite soul, more spiritual connections, more um, intuition, this sort of thing. Um, definitely feeling information from your guides and guardians coming through. You've been really stepping it up, Taurus, as far as your, uh, your connection spiritually. Um, taking that into account, your practices there. Um, I'm feeling pretty balanced here. Oh, and by the way, happy birthday, Taurus. Uh, 
So it's kind of like a rite of passage I'm feeling here. Like this birthday period for you is going to be really, um, really quite life changing, really, really deep, really in. <laughs> Oh my god, I just was shown like pay attention to their eyes. Now look at their eyes. Look at this. All of these cards, their eyes are closed. Look at that. Guides are like, look at their eyes. I'm like, oh shit. In I'm pretty sure her eyes are closed there. Well, that's what they're saying. That's how we're supposed to see it. Empress's eyes are closed. The King of Cups, eyes are closed. The Nine of Wands, eyes are closed. And the High Priestess, eyes are closed. The Eight of Wands, um, showing me what's going on when your eyes are closed, when you're going within, when you're not immersed into this reality. But the real world, the real truth of the matter is what we get to from the inside out. And that means closing your eyes to really see. Wow. So, and in this card here with the Three of Pentacles, I mean, three, this is talking about um, your ascended masters, your upper, upper level connections as far as you know, your spiritual connections and then cooperation coming together with friends and family in this world as well. But I really feel that at this time you're just like, I'm getting centered. I'm getting grounded. I'm, I'm closing out the, the world around me more and, and really I'm doing what is necessary here for my own well-being, emotional state. Um, we have cups, we have wands, we have pentacles. Um, no swords here. So really kind of saying like we're not into the headspace, the busy, logical headspace. We're going deeper. King of Cups, very deep. The Empress, very deep. Nurturing energy. Um, creative energy, nine of wands really representing reaching a new phase, being so, um, being so very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Stable, <laughs> I mean, stable, um, comfortable, like, this is where I'm at. I'm guarding my space, but I feel good. I'm at peace, this kind of thing. Uh, the Eight of Wands, just a lot of creativity, a lot of energy coming in. Like this is what you're seeing when your eyes are closed. I don't know if I already said that or not. Wow, very, very cool. Let's get into the main deal here, Taurus. We're going to get a card for yourselves. So the self archetype or the selves, like what archetype is coming up for you, Taurus, in um, for the month of May. And it is the 29th of April right now. We're a couple days away from May. And if you haven't already checked out your full moon to new moon reading, um, I kind of didn't put that copy on anything, but they're essentially when I do a full moon, it's to new moon and new moon to full moon. That's how it works. I realized that after the fact, it's just like I tend to sometimes have it in my head, but don't put it out there. But anyway, um, readings were just put up. Whoop. We're just going to take this top card what just happened <laughs> everything got all twisted up wowza okay so we got our self card i'm not gonna look at it right just yet then we're gonna get into the places so this will really um help us with a round of rounded picture of what <laughs> no pun intended with what's going on with you right now what you need oh there it is and take that um and then the tools here we'll get our tools Ah, I like that one. That one's popping. And then we'll, uh oh. There we go. And 
and then we'll get our initiation our theme of what's going on with your energy taurus there okay i'm excited for this let's see what we get with these to be the companion for your cards that we already got we have the starborn look at this oh i love this the starborn the castle the seed i just pulled this card for myself earlier and eros okay so i'm gonna grab the book and start in here starborn for the selves Pretty sure, yeah, it's at the, I was like, I thought this was at the very front. It is, there it is. Okay, here we go. Uh, the divine child, the searching, oh, sorry, the star child, the destined, an elusive yet radiant aspect of the self. The starborn archetype points to the cosmos, cosmic spark of light that arrives with each being at birth. The moment the newborn crowns, whether vaginally or surgically, the royal stars above are said to constellate, sorry, are said to constellate in a unique shape that maps our path in the world. The idea of density is controversial. Sorry, dense destiny. What is wrong with me? The idea of destiny, the idea of density is controversial. Like, what am I saying? The idea of destiny is controversial, yet the starborn naturally feels a sense of destination and purpose, aiming itself towards a future that is beyond the mundane. When this card appears, travel back to your birth story for clues and insight. What did you desire when you were young? Practice seeing your life from a mythic point of view rather than a series of logistics. Read the story of the three fates and envision yourself born under the stars with a unique destiny. Wow. So when light, um, all right, trusting, vibrant, and aimed, when dark feeling of misalignment loss and longing okay so the starborn coming in with this energy of having a destiny having this purpose feeling like they're like there's something here for you and with all of this like connecting and closed eyes like deeper connecting business it feels like you're in that state now to really want to dig deep and figure out what that's about okay let's get into the castle which is the place the archetype for the place um for you as we go into as we go into may so the places is the castle where's the castle 149 <clears throat> the castle the palace the penthouse the fortress it's no wonder fairy tales tell tell of sleeping princesses within castle walls like most archetypes the castle is loaded with duality it represents abundant riches seductive fantasy ornate wonders and lavish adornments yet the walls are thick cold and shadowy this card points to a tent tendency to hold on to possessions quite possibly a literal home or position that project the image of achievement while the soul longs to run barefoot in the forest leaving it all behind at times we must settle down yet the castle lulls us with its spells of materialism and we fall asleep to our deepest dreams the castle can be a motivating force an enchanting goal to travel towards but it is best not to linger within its walls of decadent deception for too long yeah it's kind of what i felt when i saw it. i was like hmm the castle like it wasn't like oh castle i was like hmm castle castle to me feels at least right now with this reading felt very 
um, restrictive, like stuck in the castle is kind of the, you know, when I see the starborn and then the castle, it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> interesting. So we'll get back to that. We'll get more to that. But I want to read through this. And then um, uh, when light visiting your throne of power, when dark stuckness, depression, spells and walls. So let's get into the seed next. The seed is the tool. One ninety seven. Oh, almost there. I've been really doing good. Well, if I take a second to really think about it, almost getting to the exact right page. So, okay, so that was the castle. Sorry, I haven't shown this to you since I got to it. So the castle, and then now we're getting to the seed. Okay, the beginning, the origin, the pearl. Beginnings come in many forms. They are not always be a beautiful seed placed intentionally in nourishing soil. Origin stories, like any birth story, are complex, surprising, multi-layered, and usually reveal a central image or detail that represents the fully formed being. Simply stated, the end is present in the beginning or the entire oak tree resides within the acorn. Whether you follow this imaginal theory or not, know that when this card appears, there is a potent, a potent generative energy all around. It stirs your very insides and usually results in an artsy, impatient feeling. Pay particular attention to what agitates you as it is a sure sign of growth to come. You are bumping up against a growth edge. It is from the grit that the pearl eventually comes to be. So definitely emerging into a new state of being here. That's for sure. And oh, and then when light, generative, fertile, germinating, building, when dark, festering, stewing, dormant. Okay, and then Eros. There's not that many. It's at the very front. Okay. Love as desire, eroticism, sensuality. Through Eros... Here we go. Let me show you. I think it's supposed to be like... How is this supposed to go? I think it's like this. Yeah, that. <laughs> That's Eros. Okay. Though Eros can be depicted as unbridled sexuality and eroticism a more contemplative understanding of this archetypal energy leads us to the rest to the root of desire itself what do we long for why are we awoken by love what makes us hesitate in the face of intimacy eros connects us with a primal longing to emerge with another human being nature music art plants food or anything that we perceive we are separate from Eros allows us to momentarily unite. Our heart embraces otherness, and in doing so, we further understand our own. Our life force awakens. This card reveals an inevitable initiation into love's labyrinth. Oh, wow. You may find yourself swirling in a new territory of desire and sensuality. Explore the labyrinth with a curious and honest heart, and remember... Though the way is cir circuitous, you are always being led towards its center. And when light, passion, playfulness, sexual health, and when dark, uh, madness, projection, and obsession. Okay, so let's put it all together, shall we, Taurus? So what we have here is the starborn, destiny, awakening to and really feeling into you know the purpose um your purpose what you're doing here um and when you feel more of that you definitely connect more and more with your guides and guardians it's just natural that that happens you feel your angels you feel your ancestors archangels whatever just because it's true you we all have a destiny we all have a, a soul and life mission and um 
the clues that help us unravel that gift until we see the picture. It's like collecting little pieces of the puzzle until we put it together to a certain point to go, oh, I get it. I see it. This is what brought me to here. Whether you're 20, 40, 50, 60, 80, it doesn't matter. Um, and then the castle, um, like I said, the energy that I have here with this is, 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 uh, more restrictive it's like you have possibly built up around you a certain way of being and and living and persona and all this stuff but it's like that isn't it's like it's coming it's like you're shifting away from that like there's a part in the book where she says you know it's like feeling as though you want to just run through the grass and take off the the princess garments and just you know be a a woods creature kind of thing like the exact opposite of all of that lavishness and opulence and coldness and what that means by that is that it's like straight edged it's not natural it's um constructed I guess is the best way to put it and so what we need to think here is with these other cards that came through before with the Empress the King of Cups the Nine of Wands and the High Priestess is that you're deeply connecting to your soul you're you know like I said you're you're you've realized that to to know more you have to go within instead of searching out here and the starborn definitely knows that and so and and you may see the castle or you may it could be a couple things you see the castle as the or you have seen the castle as the destiny to success but having the castle doesn't mean you're successful you could be trapped in the castle and not know yourself and be searching for yourself until your dying day where like where that is really doesn't matter and it, and it said in the book you don't want to stay there too long because it is restrictive so it's about leaving that space um whatever that is however that's been constructed it could be you know it's all built on a relationship you know you're married to and you have this whole thing going on and it's like i am so apart from this now i've i've entered this new space and even though i care for this and i love it and all of that it's just not fitting anymore the seed moving on to the seed is telling us about um starting something new and seeing the whole seeing everything in uh, like the oak tree in the sea right in the acorn um and you have all the answers i'm hearing you have the answers you have the wisdom you have like let's spark that seed um, the seed is is you, is your destiny, is your understanding. Just imagine this energy sparking up this seed and um, beginning something new in a whole new way from a whole new energetic perspective. Um, and then this Eros card, sensuality, sexuality, um, love, passion, desire, all of this. This is you feeling into your body in a whole new way. Maybe it's getting more in touch, in touch with your sexual preferences and sexuality. Maybe you just went along with i'm heterosexual this is who i am and you know that sort of thing when the truth of the matter is oh, well without getting too deep into a lot of stuff when the truth of the matter is maybe you're a lot more bisexual like most people are on some kind of spectrum there and as time has gone on in these last several years people are starting to feel in and have that balancing of the divine feminine and divine masculine within them not being like oh i'm so this or i'm so that even um people that are gay and lesbian even having heterosexual fantasies and inclinations it's like it's swinging both ways because it's meant to be neutral we're meant to be we're animals we're fluid we're meant to be in a spectrum our spectrum can be more here or more here 
But to say we're stuck right here from birth to death, especially in our in our perspective or sexuality is really confining. That could be part of this thing with your castle card too, is that this restricted type energy where it's like to, to really come into your, to your full potential as a human being, as a light body, as a soul incarnate is to feel into your body what feels good, what feels bad, and it, experiences tell you that. And so to be at your highest vibration, you need to live an authentic life. To live an authentic life is to be truthful with yourself, firstly, about what feels good to you in a in sexually and in any other way so you're coming from a place of authenticity so your spark can be as aligned as possible <coughs> so i'm kind of feeling that here maybe also things have been sex has always been kind of a center of your life a real a real driving force you're a very sexual um, person sexual energy you enjoy sex you love the physicality of it the connection of it the energy of it and all that which is good but too much focus on that can also be um distracting chaotic and overwhelming to your overall balance so ideally we we're all of our energy centers are balanced so we're not like so much energy down in the root and the sacral chakra that it's just all that sexual energy what's what is truly um, in balance is when we're we're in balance throughout our chakras, our throat chakra, our heart chakra, our solar plexus, our our sacral, our third eye. You know, those are just the ones within the body, and um, and it's not all generated from that sexual energy. So there could be a thing with possibly being too sexually motivated, too sexually um, charged, maybe um, overstimulated in the masturbation department. It could be too much of that going on where, where there's like, there's this need to balance out spiritually, energetically, emotionally, but there's a lot of energy going to that. Or the opposite being that you've repressed that sexuality, sensuality part of yourself. It's been more mechanical or you've avoided it. Um, it's been kind of a cold spot in, you know, with relationships. It's something you do, but you're not really comfortable. You don't like talking about it. You don't like trying new things. You don't like um, sharing your experiences, like this sort of thing. So either way, what I'm picking up with this Eros card with se sensuality, sexuality, love, intimacy, this sort of thing, it feels um, like it's been out of balance. And part of your whole de deal you have going on here is starting new, escaping like things that are confining. So your sexuality, your sensuality, who you are as a person coming into a new space for yourself um, in the future. And that is what May is about for you is really tuning in with you, your guides, Gaia, um, Gaia and Gaia, this, I mean, this is the Empress card, but whenever I see this card, of course, I think, um, there's a couple cards. The Queen of Pentacles is also my Gaia card in this deck. But, um, aside from that, of course, this Empress card is, is, you know, is like a, like Mother Earth Gaia card, um, for sure. And really, um, <clears throat> coming in here the moon also that's why like when I saw that card I was I thought of the moon readings that I just did I'm ready to give birth to the new you a rebirth creative energy this sort of thing and May is going to be really sparking that energy for you Taurus for you to get into the the deep 
the deep parts of yourself. Like, you know, there's deep aspects of yourself that have been neglected that, um, and going back to that card, the starborn, it talks about, um, thinking about what you liked and what excited you as a child. Cause when we're children, we're, as, we're closer to our soul origin and all that story than we are are ever again until we spiritually awaken and start to dig deep so that's why she says think about being a child and what excited you and all that good stuff because um it's like it, it is an origin of it's their clues there you know what were you really into as a child is definitely a clue for you for further connection but also connecting again connecting with Gaia connecting with nature really falling into that um I'm here to have a human experience but i'm a spiritual being and i have spiritual connections and i'm on a spiritual path and it's about figuring myself out it's about centering it's about loving myself loving my journey seeing it for what it's it's supposed to be going within being um giving myself the time the space the energy like all of again all of these cards eyes closed in solitude they're by themselves in all of these cards except for this one the three of pentacles which talks about your connection spiritually your connections and in the in the physical but what i'm really feeling here is is more in the in the spiritual you know you connected to your guides and guardians your your guardian angel your uh archangels your ascended masters your ancestors spirit guides uh, all of that <clears throat> is really coming through and they want to um they're just saying spend time with us the way that you know how in nature in meditation um as much as you can and um let's see what else we have here let's get to close this out taurus we're gonna get a hidden worlds oracle card is what i'm hearing where are the hidden oh they're there um oh okay <laughs> that was confusing um let's get a hidden worlds oracle and then we'll be done here oh three tw i just saw 32 minutes I have a timer going here so i just saw two 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 so manifestations to think of pay attention to your thoughts pay attention to what comes in your your clear cognizance and um your clairvoyance for sure your clear audience you could be hearing hearing your guides coming in um yeah what a cool reading i love this you are on your way to a transformational time um really big aha moments maybe even connecting to the akashic um i would suggest getting into more of your um doing anything that's gonna re that is uh sacred geometry um frequencies uh look into that um whoops that didn't work at all uh that sort of thing because anything that's going to push out the static and anything that doesn't that isn't in your spiritual energetic bubble is what needs to needs to stay out of your out of your space as much as possible so unless things like their social events certain work things connecting in certain ways but other than that i would really use may as a time to really focus on the inner think about healing think about um following your guides and wherever they want wherever they want you to go when i say we well, think about healing what i mean by that oh there we go Oh, we got, I'm taking the bottom part. When I, when, when I talk about healing and why that's important and energy healing, um, trauma healing, all this sort of thing and why it's important is because we have, um, to be able to connect, to have the clearest, you know, the clear, uh, clearest view, uh, 
is to clear out our energy and so to do that we need to do energy healing so of course i offer energy healing but if you have a healer that you already go to or whatever as long as you think about it in some way shape or form please um also check out we want to cut cords i'm hearing um uh, so check out my ebook and meditation on my on my website, uh, the importance of cord cutting and the the channel guided astral meditation um, for cord cutting. Just whatever you can do to clear out your path. Okay, now let's see what we got here. Mountain goddess card number twenty eight. High vibration, mindfulness, power of the mind. There we go, Mountain Goddess, card number, oh, right to it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, page number 19, Mountain Goddess. Within you, there are many powers, many senses, all the ways in which your physicality reads the world. But within you, too, are subtle energies, and one of these is the immense power of your mind. The mountain goddess calls you to raise your vibration through tending the thoughts within, not to censor or condemn, but to raise yourself up so you can be closer to the heavenly experience that is available to you upon this earth. You can tend the thoughts within you just as she tends to the mountain and you can reach divinity through the care you take with the company you keep inside your own mind mountains take us higher we can climb them we are sustained and protected by them and they give us the opportunity to look out cl clearly and gain great perspective and wisdom because we are no longer amidst the minutia of everyday life it is now time for you to take your mind to this place of the mountains, to fly, fly free, give yourself the relief your mind requires in order to be your great ally. Soaring minds are capable of great things. If you ask, this mountain goddess can intercede with great spirit on your behalf and allow you the clarity, the perspective, the soaring freedom, and the powerful healing this mountain offers tune into this space set yourself here i'm sorry see yourself here within her tender hands let the things of the world which have their beauty and their holy place fall away for this moment take yourself to this mountain and feel its protection its stabilizing energy and the respite from the mind filled with the worry that robs you of your true power let her care for you just for a while and when you return there will be answers where once there were questions solutions where once there were problems and compassion where once there was an enmity okay now illumination mantra <clears throat> excuse me a higher perspective brings healing my mind can become as strong as a mountain here here oh my god this is so on point and exactly what i was saying before we even like pulled over the card i was like healing and what i mean by that blah 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 and that's exactly right to go into a place of solitude raise your vibration to raise your vibration you need to go within you need to think you need to see what what you're thinking see what you're feeling get a clue as to what needs to be healed and if you have a physical problem a chronic issue pains things like this then you are obviously need to be healed so really start thinking about how you know our fit not um, <sighs> It's confusing because it's not to say that if we're in great distress and pain physically that we can't be spiritual, raise and ascend and all of that. We can. It's just so much harder. And we're not meant to be in pain. We're meant to feel good in our bodies. So pain is an indication that there's something wrong that needs to be taken care of. Like the, the light that pops up on your dashboard pay attention to this or else we're going to have bigger problems and so any kind of pain just dis, dis, 
discomfort, anxieties, um, discontentment in the body is giving you a clue at what needs to be healed and how. This message, message is saying, Go within, go into the, into, the, into the energy of the mountain and be with that energy of the mountain goddess so you can have that clarity, the solitude that you've seen here today, um, starborn um, as well. So there we go. There we go. The mountain goddess. Wow, okay, well, Taurus. I love this reading for you. I hope it resonates for you. Please just ruminate on it for um, a couple of days. Think about where you're at with this. And, you know, if you're not quite just there yet, then just know this is coming for you. If you're in this pocket, just really go with it because you're supported to really it's like everybody's showing up to this birthday party with gifts to give you clues for who and what you are and where you're meant to go from here on out all right taurus once again if i can help please let me know check out my website thehealingbutterfly.org my email is infinity at the healing butterfly reach out if you'd like to work with me independently one-on-one -on -one, or if you have any questions at all also i love comments please like share and subscribe to this channel if you want more and again check out that new empath video uh until next time taurus infinite love and blessings. Bye for now.